Hi class, today we'll be looking at chapter six. We're gonna be discussing process cost accounting, the weighted average method and the FIFO method, uh, this time using costs that are going to be uh, performed uniformly throughout the process. So if you'll hold on just a minute, let me uh, open up my Excel spreadsheet for you. And so you should be able to see now exercise 622. And what we're going to be doing in the first exercise is the weighted average method. We're going to be calculating equivalent units. We're going to be also assigning unit, unit cost. And then uh, it's going to be done through multiple departments. So the Fordman company has a product that passes through two processes the grinding and the polishing department or process. During December, the grinding department transferred 20,000 units to the polishing department. We're going to be the polishing department in this company. So we're receiving in these 20,000 units from the grinding department where we're going to polish them and then we're going to send them out of this department somewhere else. The cost of the units transferred into the second department was 40,000. So these 20,000 units that came in had a cost associated with them of 40,000. Direct materials are added uniformly in the second process. Notice I've got this in bold. That's because it's very important information. Be sure and read your directions carefully because it tells you how they want you to answer uh, the problem. If direct materials are added uniformly in the second process, what that means is in the polishing department, we're going to be adding direct materials throughout the process, not just at the beginning of the process, as some of the problems that we've worked have had us doing. That means there's going to be a little bit of a difference in our calculations for our equivalent units because the direct materials are going to be added uniformly uh, in the process, the second process, which is the polishing department's process. They have given you some information for whole units. They've told you that you had beginning uh, inventory that was 40% complete. So there'd be 4,000 units uh, in your beginning inventory that was given. They also told you that you started 20,000 units that you received from the grinding department. And so that was a given amount too. In order to find whole units, you will have to add your beginning inventory units to the units that you received from the previous department. And that will give you the total units to account for. This total units to account for has to be reconciled to units to be assigned cost. So I like to start with whole units to start with because the whole units are the same no matter whether you do the weighted average or the FIFO method, it's just a good place to start. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna assign our um, equivalent units uh, based on uh, the weighted average method. So the next step in the process of whole units is to reconcile this 24,000, we're gonna break this amount down further. Our beginning inventory was given, so we just plug this in basically here. We don't know what we started and completed. We don't know our units transferred, but we do know that they gave to us that 8,000 units were finished as far as ending inventory is concerned. So you can work backwards to find these amounts. Uh, 24,000 is the same thing that would be plugged in here. So if we have 24,000 and we know the ending inventory, the difference between these two is the units transferred. So the units transferred plus the ending inventory units will give you the total units to assign cost. Once you know what is transferred, you can work backwards to find what you started and completed. You'll need to know the started and completed units uh, for the FIFO method. Um, so but to find these started and completed units, you simply work backwards. 
you take the 16,000 units transferred and subtract 4,000 from it, and it'll give you the 12,000. Now remember, we're calculating equivalent units for this problem using the weighted average method. So in the weighted average method, we totally disregard our beginning inventory units when we're calculating uh, our equivalent units. To calculate the equivalent units, what we need to know is what we transferred out of the polishing department. And that was the 16,000 that we found by subtracting 8,000 for 24,000. This 16,000 is what you're transferring out of the polishing department to the next process, or it could be finished goods. They didn't really tell us which one it was, but this is what we're transferring out. So our materials, we transferred out 16,000 units. Conversion, we transferred out 16,000 units. And of the materials that we received in, we transferred out 16,000 units. Um, what we have transferred in units uh, in ending inventory, which is the next step when you're using, uh, when you're calculating weighted average, you start by uh, calculating the equivalent units for the units that are transferred out, and then you work on the ending inventory units. Um, what we transferred in units are 100% complete with respect to materials and conversion. Notice I put this in the third category here that we have for what we have received from the grinding department. We've received in um, 20,000 total units. We transferred out 16,000 of those. So we have left 8,000 units, which made up of 4,000 of the beginning inventory units and 4,000 that was from the transferred in units, the 20,000 that we originally got. The total amount of units uh, that are in ending inventory are 8,000. But what I really want to emphasize about those ending inventory units that are transferred uh, out or are part of the transferred in units that you got in is that they all have all of the materials and the labor and the overhead cost associated with it. When you transfer in your materials, you transfer in the cost for those materials too. So this 8,000 already has the materials cost, the conversion cost, and what was transferred in cost are already in there. So going back to calculating the materials equivalent units in the ending inventory, since they said that the, the ending inventory was 50% complete, this 50% 50 complete means that it's complete with respect to materials. So you might remember that when we had uh, materials that were added only at the beginning of the process, right here, we put in 100% of the ending inventory units. That's not the case when we have units that are added uniformly during the process. There's a difference here. The materials that are added uniformly during the process are 50% of the materials are added uh, to the ending inventory units, not 100% of those. For conversion, uh, it's 50% complete with respect to conversion. So 8,000 times four, th four times, excuse me, 8,000 times 50% will give you 4,000 uh, conversion units. So notice this materials here is a little bit different than what you're used to when it states in the problem that the materials are added at the beginning of the process, we'd use 100%. But in this case, the materials were added uniformly, so we only use what they tell us that we have completed as far as ending inventory is concerned. So in other words, I want to emphasize this or drive this home to you. The ending inventory is 50% complete with respect to materials and labor and overhead, which is your conversion. The total of the units transferred out plus the units in ending inventory 
will give you the total equivalent units for materials. These two added together, the equivalent units for conversion, and these two added together are the equivalent units for the transferred in units. So the main differences between this and what you've done in the past is that you have an extra column for the transferred in units that you haven't had before. And that's because we received in some units from the grinding department. And then this part right here is different because the materials are added uniformly throughout the period of time. Then they gave us the cost of the work in process uh, that was uh, direct materials conversion and transferred in cost. That's the beginning work in process, I should say. And the cost added during the month, these are the current cost, are direct materials of 32,000 conversion, 50,000 and transferred in units of 40,000. So when you're recording your cost information, um, just like with your equivalent units, you're gonna have three basic uh, columns that you're dealing with. I just added an extra one in here so we could keep a total of all these things so we can reconcile our cost a little bit easier. So we're gonna start with our beginning work in process and we're gonna put down the cost that came from uh, for materials in the beginning inventory. And you see in your instructions here, the materials were 5,000. So that's where I'm getting this 5,000 conversion was 6,000 and transferred in 8,000. All of these are given to you. I simply added the three together and got 19,000 as the total of the beginning inventory cost. Then you had some costs that were incurred during the period. And again, these were given. The direct materials was 32,000. The conversion was 50,000. And the transferred in costs were 40,000. And so if you add all three of these together, you're gonna to come up with 122,000 current costs for this period. And then what you would do is combine them with the beginning inventory costs and that will give you 141,000 as the total cost that we need to account for. You can reconcile this by adding your materials beginning inventory plus what you incurred during uh, the period together. The total materials for this problem was 37,000. The conversion was 6,000 plus 50,000, which is 56,000, and then the total transferred in was 48,000 because 8,000 was from beginning and then 20,000 units came in at 40,000 each. The three of these are added together and it backs back up to this 141,000. So you got a system of checks and balances here. The next thing that you need to determine in your cost information or really the first thing you need to determine is the cost per equivalent unit. To find the cost per equivalent unit, you take the total materials cost for the period and divide it by the materials equivalent units. The equivalent cost per equivalent unit for materials is $1.85. For your conversion, your total conversion cost for this period were 56,000, these two added together divide it by 20,000, and that will give you $2.80, which is your cost per equivalent unit. For your transferred in cost, these were the total transferred in cost of 48,000. The two of these together, 48,000. You're gonna divide it by 24,000, your equivalent units, and that'll give you $2 per equivalent unit materials conversion and your transferred in cost all total a unit cost of $6.65. Once you have these costs to account for, you can break these costs to account for down further by looking at when you're talking about weighted average method, the unit transferred cost to determine the unit transferred cost, we would take the units transferred 
and multiply it by the equivalent units for each of the cost categories. So in the first category where it's materials, we multiply 20,000 times a dollar and 80, excuse me, we multiply 16,000 times a dollar and 85, and that will give you 29,600. <coughs> excuse me. Since we're talking about units transferred, units transferred for conversion, 16,000 units times $2.80 that will give you a total cost for conversion of transferred units, 44,800. For our transferred in cost, we had 16,000 units that we actually transferred out, but the transferred in cost per unit was $2. So you got to multiply 16,000 times $2 and that'll give you 32,000 of costs that were from what we had brought in from the previous period. Then you're going to combine all these together or from the previous department, I should say, not the previous period, but from the previous department. Combine uh, materials, conversion, and transferred costs together, and that will give you 106400 This is the total cost that you're transferring out of your work in process. So over here on the side, I created a T account for you to help demonstrate to you the cost and the units and how they would flow through the work in process account. Notice this 106,400 that I came up with is the cost that we're transferring out. Notice the units that we're transferring out are 16,000 that we're transferring out here. And then in our work in process, our beginning inventory was 19,000. Those were the costs there. And then these are our current costs for this period. All of them combined are 122,000. So your beginning inventory plus your current cost minus what you transferred out will leave you with the ending inventory cost of 34,600, which is going to balance up when we finish this reconciliation out here. This should be the balance of this, just like this is the balance of this or the amount of that. All right, back to uh, the cost to, to account for. In the weighted average method, we only use transferred cost and ending inventory cost. So my ending inventory cost, I'm going to take my materials amount for ending inventory, which was 4,000 units, and multiply it by the equivalent cost per unit of $1.85, and that's how I get 7,400. So again, 4,000 times $1.85 gives you 7,400. For your conversion, 4,000 were your ending inventory conversion units times your conversion cost per unit of $2.80. That will give you the total conversion cost for ending inventory at 11,200. Then we're going to take the 8,000 Remember, the 8,000 was because all the cost had been accounted for during this period of time, 100% of these ending inventory units, which is 8,000, times $2, the cost per transferred in unit, will give you 16,000, which is the ending inventory cost. So 8,000 times $2 is 16,000. When you add up all your ending inventory costs, they equal 34,600, which should balance with your ledger account balance. And then once you know your ending inventory and you have what you transferred out, the total of these two added together brings you back to 141,000. You can double check that by combining these costs and then adding them straight across and it'll give you that same 141,000. 1,000. So what I want you to get from this is that your materials are added uniformly in the polishing process. 
They told us that in the instructions. Conversion is added uniformly through the process. Always conversion is added uniformly, but materials, sometimes they can be added at the beginning of the process. That was not the case here. They're added uniformly. And because of this, the um, equivalent units for materials and conversion will be equal for the polishing department. So those are some things to take away from, excuse me, this particular problem. So let's move on to the next exercise, which is really the same exercise again, but we're just gonna look at it from a FIFO point of view. So in exercise 623, we're using the FIFO method. Same thing that we did before, materials are gonna be added uniformly during the second process. Um, and then we calculate the whole units the same way that we did before. In fact, I just basically copied what I had from exercise 6-2 in here. And then uh, I put down the cost and that came from Cengage. All this is copied information basically. This time we're using the FIFO method. And uh, again, this is what they started with in Cengage. And it's the same thing as what I had here that came from the previous problem. I just recopied it several places so we could see all of this at one time. These are whole units here. Um, the only difference between the weighted average method and the, and the uh, FIFO method is that the beginning inventory costs are gonna be accounted for in a prior period. And so that's gonna affect our equivalent units. And so uh, when we're calculating the equivalent units for materials, uh, we all have to keep in mind that the materials were added uniformly throughout this process. So since we completed 40% last period, 60% would have to be completed this period. So 60% of the whole units of 4,000 gives you 2,400 units that are in materials. So again, this is 4,000 times 60% gives you 2,400 that have to be finished during this period of time. And again, that's because the materials were added uniformly throughout the process. We had all 60% that have to be added during this period of time for the FIFO method. So we've taken a beginning inventory into consideration. Uh, the remaining cost of beginning inventory we have to complete it, be completed this period. And so for conversion, it's basically the same thing. 4,000 units are multiplied by 60% with respect to conversion because conversion costs are always added uniformly throughout the period. These two happen to be the same because of the materials being added uniformly during the period of time, that was a given amount. The unit started and completed, you'll remember we calculated, we had to find that. It was in, uh, took the 24,000, plugged it down here and subtracted the 8,000 that was given in ending inventory to get your 16,000 units transferred. Then once you got that, you subtract out your beginning inventory and this is what you started and completed as far as whole units. If you started and completed the units, then 100% of the materials have been added and 100% of the conversions been added and 100% of those started and completed units uh, that came from transferred in, the 12,000 uh, are finished completely during this period of time. The units in process and ending inventory is 50% complete with respect to materials, labor, and overhead. Labor and overhead are your conversion, remember. So 50% is complete with respect to materials. Notice on your materials, this 4,000 here is um, calculated by taking half, 50%, 
of the 8,000. That's different than what it would have been if the, the units would have been added at the beginning of the process, there would have been all 8,000 there, but this is not the case for this problem. The materials are added uniformly throughout the process. So 50% is all we got in ending inventory. It's all we have for conversion too. 50% is complete with respect to labor and overhead, which is your conversion. And then of the transferred in units, 8,000 of those uh, are finished units because they're transferred in, they're complete units that were transferred in from the previous department. Notice in the equivalent unit section, um, because we have some units that were transferred in from a prior period, or not from a prior period, I'm sorry, I keep saying that, the units were transferred in from another department for us to work on. And so in that case, we have three different uh, inputs that we have to use for our equivalent units. One is for materials, one is for conversion, and one is for transferred in units. So to find the <coughs> equivalent units under the FIFO method, we take the beginning inventory units plus what we started and completed to give us what we transferred plus our ending inventory units. That gives us our equivalent units. And the same is done for our conversion. Notice that under the FIFO method, the equivalent units for materials and the equivalent units for conversion is equal. The transferred in units are 20,000 and that would be the 12,000 plus the ending inventory and that backs up to the total amount that were transferred in originally it stated in your problem. Now we're going to apply cost information to these, this unit information. And the first thing we need to do is find our cost per equivalent unit. Notice under the FIFO method, we only use current cost. Under the weighted average method, we included beginning inventory cost. In this method, we don't when we, in the FIFO method, we do not include beginning inventory cost, we just include the current period cost in calculating our cost per equivalent unit. So these are our current costs and they were given in your instructions. This part right here is our current cost, 32,000, 50,000 and 40,000. So that's where I got these, this information. And then I just totaled it up, which is a total current period cost of 122,000. You didn't have to do this part here, but I chose to do that. Your materials cost divided by your equivalent units will give you the cost per equivalent unit. Your conversion cost divided by the equivalent units for conversion will give you your cost per equivalent unit for conversion. Your current cost of your transferred in units divided by your equivalent units of 20,000 would give you a $2 amount for our transferred in units. All three of these combined together is the total unit cost for this department. Then what we do is we take the cost information that was given to us. We had some materials, some conversion costs and transferred costs that were all combined together to get 19,000. All of this information was given. There were 5,000 of beginning inventory cost in materials, 6,000 in conversion and 8,000 in transferred cost. That's where I get the 19,000 here. The current cost for this period are materials and conversion. So the current costs were given to you in your information from above. The current cost of materials were 32,000, 
excuse me, yes, it's 32,000 and conversion was 50,000. 32,000 plus 50,000 is the 82,000 we're talking about here. And then you take your transferred in cost, which was a given amount, 20,000 units were transferred in at a cost of 40,000. And the total cost for this period would be beginning inventory, your current cost, which really include your materials, labor and overhead here, and your transferred in cost. So these are your total cost. And we're gonna reconcile those um, by putting them through the steps uh, that we use to determine our equivalent units here. We'll start with uh, our beginning inventory cost, and then we're gonna to go to um, started and completed units, and then we're gonna add transfer, excuse me, and then we're gonna add ending inventory to get our total assigned cost. So we're just reconciling what we got here. So this 19,000 in beginning inventory was made up of 5,000 beginning inventory materials, which was given 6,000 of conversion for beginning inventory, which was given and 8,000 were transferred in cost. These three added together are 19,000. What you have to remember is that your beginning inventory cost came from last period. You need to finish the beginning inventory this period of time because the first units in are going to be the first ones completed in this um, FIFO method. So the beginning inventory cost you had 60% that you had left to complete during this period of time. So we're gonna start with our materials, beginning inventory costs that we had to finish during this period of time, which we find by taking our equivalent units for materials and in beginning inventory, which was this 2,400 and multiplying it by a dollar and 74. And that will give you this $4,173.91. We have some conversion costs that we need to also finish for our beginning inventory. And to calculate the conversion cost, we're gonna take the conversion beginning inventory units, which were also 2,400. We're gonna multiply it by $2.72, and that's gonna give us our conversion cost. We didn't have any transferred costs that we needed to complete. They were already finished and all that was shown up above here. So these two added together what we had to complete the beginning inventory. Cost to complete beginning inventory are 10,695. We're gonna combine that with our beginning inventory costs that we brought forward from last period and that will give us this. These two items will give us this. And to further break it down, we could add these two together to get this. This is added to this to get this. And this plus zero is this. These three added together combined are $29,695.65. That's our total beginning inventory cost. Then we're gonna find the cost of our units started and completed. So when you're using the FIFO method, find the remaining beginning inventory cost, find your total beginning inventory cost, and then find the cost of those units that you started and completed. The units that you started and completed were 12,000 whole units, which means that all materials, conversion and transferred cost should be in there. So what we do is we take the, to find the cost of the units started and completed, we're going to take the materials 12,000 and multiply it by the equivalent unit cost per unit for, for materials. So 12,000 times 174 is how we get this amount. 
12,000 times 272 is how we get the conversion cost. And 12,000 times two is how we're going to get the transferred in cost. Add these three together, it will give you this. Once you have this, you can add it to your beginning inventory cost. And this tells you what you transferred out of the working process for the polishing department. You can reconcile this figure by combining these two amounts together and adding them across. And that'll give you the same thing here. Then what we do is we break down our ending inventory. So to find our materials cost of ending inventory, we take the ending inventory units, equivalent units, which was 4,000 times $1.74 and that will give you the materials cost of ending inventory. To find the conversion, we take the 4,000, multiply it by $2.72, and that will give you $10,869.57. To find our transferred in cost, we will take the 8,000, and multiply it by two, and that's how you get 16,000. Combine all three of these together, and that will give you the ending inventory cost. And this was the ending inventory that would be the balance in your work in process account at the end of the period. When you add your ending inventory and what you transfer it out, it comes back up to 141,000, which should match this figure here. It's got to match it. And then if you combine the transferred cost plus the ending inventory together, it gives you the total cost of materials, the total cost of conversion, and the total cost of transferred in units. All three of these added together will back back up to 41. 141,000. And that's all I want to talk to you about today. This is the last video for chapter six. So we'll see you next time.